Welcome to today's presentation, the L32 series review. My name is Mark Carlson and I will be presenting this to, to you today. I am a regional down with MCC and I work down in the New England area. Just a quick confirmation that you're seeing the L32 slide. Correct. Okay, thank you. Now, we're going to be today. We're going to be reviewing the L32. You know the different versions, different models, and comparing the differences between some of the models. Right now, we're looking at the state the. The L32 layout, which is this contains all versions. So now we're talking, it contains the B axis, does not show, but there is C axis, C axis on the main, C axis on the sub. We have on our main spindle or front spindle, you know, that could, they all consist of an 8,000 RPM motor, about 3.7 kilowatts there. To, 7.5 our maximum machining length of course is on that is with the guide bushing mode is 320 millimeter rotary tools on the gang posts we have 6000 rpm max we have a motor rating of about one kilowatt now the rotary tools on the opposite tool post here that is an option so that is not part of the standard package but again it has a 6000 rpm max with a one watt kilowatt motor your back spindle 8000 rpm with motor rating of 2.2 .2 to 3.7 kilowatt back rotary tool post this will be for the type 10 or the type 12 again you have the 6000 rpm max with a one kilowatt motor rating. Now the L32 here, we have three versions. We have the type 8, the type 10, and the type 12. So all three are LFV ready. So when you look on the quote, you'll see the LFV RD. It means that all three versions are LFV ready. It's not that it's turned on, but they all have the capability of it. Your type five, your type eight has a five axis control machine and it, it's has an excellent cost performance. Your type 10 steps you up into a six axis control machine with a maximum tool mounting capacity of 44 tools. And of course your type 12 is the six axis control plus the B axis. So now you can get the top range of the L32 models. And in this chart here, you can see what is standard what goes across all platforms so again we look up top we'll discuss upcoming is the the gang and the live tool unit the opposite tool posts they they all have the u120b so those are fixed id stations located on the sub spindle next to the sub spindle the back tool post so that's where it changes and we'll get into that in the future slides. But first, we're going to talk about the features common to all versions. Main spindle, again, on all of them is the 200 to 800 RPM range. Again, we have the 3.7 to 7.5 kilowatt with the TF37 spindle collet chuck. Your back spindle is the same except that its kilowatt rating is 2.2 to 3.7. Now we have for synchronous rotary type guide bushing, we have a TD32 guide bushing unit. And the gang tool live post is from 200 to 600 RPM with the one kilowatt rating. Again, that's across all the three platforms. We have the ability to use the guide bushing or non-guide bushing or guide bushing less on these machines. So once you remove the guide bushing, we have a max of per chuck length of 80 millimeter 
or 2.5 times diameter. When we're in guide bushing mode, our max, as you'll see here, is 320 millimeter. Hey, Mark, uh, we have yep. a question here. Can LFD be installed in the field after the customer has purchased the machine or does it need to be installed at factory? Well, LFV, all the machines that are LFV ready can be turned on in the field. We cannot install LFV in the field, not the components. So for a machine to be turned on in the field, it has to be already LFV ready. Thank you very much. Standard to all is a workpiece conveyor. You know, this is so all your parts will be brought out through the back side of the machine. All units have a lubrication system you know, for way lube for your ways and its capacity is 0.8 liters and it does have an oil level or low level detection system. Your controls have the capability of USB use or compact flash. So the compact flash card or the USB can be used for transferring programs in and out of the machine. Also, your network I.O. is standard and it has a, you can, with this system, you can have up to a maximum of 25 units or 25, 255 machines. Sorry about that. And the software is included with this package. Your workpiece separator, okay. Above your conveyor, you know, you have a parts box or parts collection. And when you're using that, we have the ability to unload a part that's about max 150 millimeter. Of course, we have an adjustable operations panel. And we have on top of that a back work air blow unit. And of course, door interlocks and switches. Now, on the control side of things, we have the on-machine program check, which allows us to run through a program without running the machine. It allows, it will come up with errors that are syntax errors and or stroke errors. And this way we can cycle through a program without running the program, having to stop, and it will get through some of your more common errors. The code list display. Well, your code list display now is on your, in your edit section, and what it will allow you to do is you can see the code, have a definition of the code, and anything that is attached to that code. Also, you are able to insert from the code list straight into your program. Also, we have the easy to understand illustrations. And with whether it's MC data or you're jogging a spindle, it shows you which spindle, it shows you which tools you're dealing with, so it has a very nice visual representation of what you're working with at the time and depending on what screen you're in. Now, all three systems have the ability to run from a card or what we call external memory. So this is when you have a CAM package where you have a very large program and you need to run a sub program or part of a large CAM section, but you don't want to use up all your memory. So you can run that from a card. Now, it allows you to run programs up to one gig. Okay, but also another question, the compact flash has to remain in the machine. If it's removed during the process, it, it will screw everything up. So you have to make sure that the card did not get removed during this process. And also, you cannot use the USB as the external memory device. Your eco monitoring system. This soft, part of the software will do, it monitors your power consumptions, your time, idling time, and all these other features, which is nice if you want, you have to monitor and do any machine metrics. What you can do also is various graphs can be output to a CSV formats to a card.
Now the next following three slides, these are gonna be the standard functions of the NC unit. Now we're not gonna go over everyone individually. I really am gonna point out a couple of the key ones. If you have any questions about any of the other ones, you know, feel free to ask. But on some of the, on a couple of the things, and a couple of things to note, especially from a sales situation, is your cutting feed rate. You're up to 8,000 millimeters per minute. Okay. Another thing you want to note is it also has, we talked about the compact flash in the USB, but it also has the RS-232 capability standard. Minimum increments, pretty much in the microns or sub inch. The other thing to make note of is that you have standard 80 offsets or 80 pairs of offsets which come in real handy, especially when you start getting into the type 10 and the type 12 versions. Your standard part programming work area is about 160 meters. And we will get into what your options are of that later. We have rapid feed rate. Another good thing to note is the 32 meters a minute. But on the Y axis, it's a 24 meters per minute. Your cutoff tool breakage detector by spindle speed check. This is a nice feature because you can check to see if your cutoff is broken by rotating of the spindles. It's all part of it in the programming process. And it's a very slick way to uh, confirm that your cutoff is still intact and that the part has actually been cut off. Another thing I like to mention is we have not just tool light management one, but tool life management too. So not only can we monitor the time of a tool, with tool life management two, we can actually switch to another tool. So if we have using tools for roughing or milling where they wear out, we can actually have the machine automatically switch. Again, we talked about subprograms running in external memory or the compact flash card, which is standard and the network I.O. function, which is standard. But I guess before we go into this next section, are there any questions on some of the standard items that we just discussed? So far, so good, Mark. OK. Now, what we're going to be talking about in the next is the tooling features by version. Um, hopefully this will clear up some of the confusion about you know, what's what's on what. And with the three versions, you know, we'll go through step by step what's common, what's specific to each system. Now, one thing I want to note before we get into this is some of the options that you use, some of the tools you see here in the next couple slides, there are that are standard and there are ones that are options. So if you need anyone, you have to you know, definitely check on the quote to see if it's a standard or an option, especially if you need it for a specific part. Now here we have, it's common to all of them. So whether it's a type eight, a type 10 or a type 12, the GTF 5916 gang, six tool position with the five eights tool. The other thing that's standard across all platforms is your front ID station. What are your front ID stations? They're, they're the tools or the static tools that are mounted on your sub spindle. Four positions, one inch diameter. So they're all your ID work. Next, we're gonna talk about the tooling feature, or in this case, feature, that is just for the L32 Type 8. On the L32-8, the one thing that is um, standard and only to this model is your backward block. So these are your 30s, your back tools that work with the sub spindle. The U150B is a five station back tool pose. That's, they're all one inch, but they're all static or what we would call fixed. You can use this for drilling, turning, 
boring, but there is no live component or live tool motor, that is an option. Next we'll be going what kind of what crosses over. So on the L32 type 8 and the L32 type 10, they share a couple of features in the tooling groups. The main one is they their live tool motor or live tool unit that's on the gang, which is the U31B. What you have here is five modular spindles. And if you notice on the last spindle, you also have the ability, if when using a live tool, to set it at an angle. It is manual and it is not the axis. But the Type 8 and the Type 10 share the same gang live tool motor, which then means they also share some of the similar tool. Hey, Mark, we got a question here about tool yep. life. Uh, tool life, does tool life count each time the tool is used? How can I change each cycle instead? We don't, as far as I know, we do not have that option. Uh, what it is, is it goes by tool count. So you would have to, you know, if you're using a tool 30 times in a program, the, the excessive number, you know, you would have to take your number of your tool life and times it by 30, or if you're using it 10 times, it'd have to be times 10. You can look at it by time instead of by use. So you have two ways of dealing with this. So you may be able to use your actual time of use compared to the uh, how many instances that you use that. And that might work for you. Thank you. Now in our first spindle, again, these are all modular, so they all drop out of your gang mount. We have three possible tooling combinations. Now you have your GSE 1310, which is just a standard straight ER16 cross spindle. We also have the ability to put in two other holders, which are static. So for, for some reason you needed extra turning tools, you could actually remove a live tool and put a turning tool in its place. So you have, in this case, the GTF 6312 and the GTF 6313. What's the difference? One is a 12 millimeter stick tool, the other is a 13 millimeter or half inch. Our next two positions, now it's increased a little bit. You have the three that we just talked about. It can be added into this position, but now we have the BSE 607, the BSE 707, and the GDF 1207. Well, your BSE 607, if you just needed three live tools at the front, you don't need anything for the backward block, well, that's your tool holder for you. If you need to work on the sub and the main at the same time or at different times, now we can incorporate the BSE 707. If you just need static tools, you say, you know, you want to speed up your cycle time and not use the 20 series tools. Now we can use the GDF 1207 on the gang. Now the GDF 1207, these are three quarter inch shank holders. So they're a little bit smaller than what you have in the 20 series, but you have to keep that in mind for a tool and capacity size. In our next position, our fourth position, we have again, the 1310, which is common to all. But now we can incorporate the GDF 1601. I can incorporate the GSE 1810 and the GSE 1910. Well, again, you know, we talked about the GDF 1207. Now we have a GDF 1601. What's the difference? Well, now I have one inch shank tools capability. But because it's over further on the gang, and there's, you know, due to interferences with the sub spindle, now as we move away from that gang plate, we have the availability for bigger tools. We are live tools. They're very similar to what we've shown before, but now we're ER16 instead of ER11. So now you have a bigger shank capability with the bigger holder.
last but not least, our end position. Now, we just went through, now you saw all those tools, but now we've also added now a GSE 2010. Well, what's the difference? Now I have four on the front and four on the back for live tooling capability. I also add the GSE 3210, which is a modular holder. Traditionally, if you needed to work on cross and face, just on the main spindle, you could use the GSE 1610. But if you need to do any kind of sub spindle work, that's when you'll get into the GSE 1810 or the 2010. Now we're going to continue on with the GSE 3210 because that is a modular holder. Those are familiar with the L series machines. Um, it's very similar to that arm that went into your last position. Now this arm, which mounts in your last position, now has a whole bunch of different combinations that you can do added to that one station. So now each one of these, I you know the picture doesn't show it, but each one of these can take a GSE 1310. Now the top position, we're looking again, you have the stick tools capability. You have the, now we have a GDF 508. Now what's the difference on that? Well, that is a static holder that can mount in the arm only. And now again, we're down to that three quarter shank diameter tool. Your G, or we can also use the GSE in that top position, the 3707. That's two front, two back. They are ER11 though, so you're limited on a tooling capacity to fit in this arm. Your next or your center positions, again, you take those same tools. So you can have two of the GDF 508s or two of the GSE 3707s without a problem. On our bottom, again, we can take the all those same tools again but now we can also add the GSE 1607, which would add, give us a second cross tool in that position, or the GSE 3807, which is triple front, triple back. Now that these tool, this tool here in the GSE 1607 can only be used just like the GDF 508 and the GSE's 3707 can only be used when the arm is at the cross position. So it can't be used when it's in a face position. That's something to keep in mind. Any questions on? So far, so good, Mark. OK, so now the next tooling features, these are going to be common to the L10 and the L12. Both the L10, Type 10, and the Type 12. Both have the U3, U12B, which is the back tool post with Y axis. Now, the Y axis is physically part of this tool post. So it's not your sub spindle that moves up and down, but it is your backward block. So in this backward block, we have four rotary tools and then five fixed tools at the bottom. In this unit, okay, again, these are optional tooling, but you can use the same GSE 1310 you had in the gang. So if you didn't have extras, you could always, and you didn't need all the gang tools, you can use one of those from there. Now the GSE 1910 can be mounted as a cross tool. We also have the Tandem, the BT Tandem 2000. Now that's an ER16 spindle. Now what this gives us the ability to do is since the bottom tools are static, by using this tandem holder, we can drive both tool positions and make them both live. And they are ER16. Then we have the BT SSA 1000 assembly. Again, this can be used for sawing, 
some cases it can be used for hobbing and the likes. But that can be mounted on the backward block as well. L32 Type 12. Now, the L32 Type, L32 type 12 is the only one that has the B axis capability. The other two have the rotational live tool capability, but it's manually done, it's fixed, and it cannot be programmed. Here now we're going into the realm where we can actually program an axis, use it as phase, use it as cross, goes all the way to negative 45, and it can be used on the back spindle. You have four front and four back live tools. Now in this configuration, we have U32B. So it's a different configuration from the type eight and the type 10. The first spindle that drops out, again, same, same as the other two machines. So if you have other machines and you have these, you, they're interchangeable. So that makes it very nice. You have the GSE 1310 again, ER 16, live cross, and the two static tool holders. Our next two positions, well, you have a GSC 1310, the two live, the two stationary stick tools, the 12 and the 13 millimeter. In these two positions, you can have the BSE 607, so live front work only the bse 707 which gives us three live on the front and three live to the sub spindle here we can use that gdf 1207 three quarter inch tooling static tools we use front on the main or on the sub the gdf 1601 you want to use one inch tool shank static tools again main and sub. GSE 1610, ER16, front work, three live tools. And of course, the ER16 capability compared to the 607, which is actually ER11. GSE 1810, ER16, you have three front and three back. The GSE 910 is a single for using for front work in case you don't need, you know, four back, four front, three, three back or three front. So if you only need one, this is an option for tool. Hey, Mark, we have a question about the GSE 3210. Yeah. Uh, in the case that I want to use just the last station to have more clearance, is it required to put the holder in the first station in order to rotate the live spindle? If you want to use the G3210, so we. Correct. So the G3210 on the Type 10, pop back real quick, can only be mounted in this one position. The last position on the gang. And it has the ability to be fixed at an angle front or back, but that is reserved for that last position only. I guess that is that. Thank you. Question is? Mm -hmm. OK. So Mark, I would like to add just a statement and you said it some, but just to be clear, when when we add all these tools and if you go to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, to the one that shows all of the there and here. Yeah. So. When we add tools like this, if you looked at competitors or other machines, it's a programming nightmare to go find the tool and, and it has four, it has three, is it forward re reverse direction because tool holders change? Well, you, what we do is you register this in the program called machining data and it knows this tool holders there. 
So even when you call up tools, the machine will, I call it the dance, will move around this large tool that's sticking out to get to the next tool, all covered automatically and safely by citizen. So as this looks like a daunting array of tools, it's actually very easy to use. And you may have some of these on your L20 that you don't need to purchase it. You can just take it from your other machine and put it here, as long as it's in the register of the machining data. So just good to know everything is uh, showing well. I just wanted to bring up that one point. Yes, and uh, one thing also too to note is by tool call, the citizen will actually correct rotation by tool call. So you don't have to worry about forward reverse. If you put in forward for one tool, and you switch to another tool, it will automatically know how to do it behind the scenes so you don't have to do it for each individual tool in a live gang situation. Okay. So go ahead and continue, thank you. It's bad, so okay, we had that. We're covering this, okay. Covered that, okay. So again, in the front first position, these are your options on the Type 12. Again, it has the U32B compared to the U31B of the 8 and 10. In our next two positions, again, all these holders, as we discussed, you've seen them in the other slides, but now they mount in these two dropout positions. The one difference now is we have our B axis. Standard B axis is the forefront, four back ER16. That's the SCU uh, 1110. That's standard with the machine, but we also have options that can fit on that station. So you got, we also have the BTW 6000, which gives you thread whirling up to a program way up to 25 degrees. Now, when we look at the last slides for the type 10 and type 8, we had the GSE 3210. Well, this is the B axis version of that. So yes, it is an option, but it allows you to use all the same tools and, and get the same configuration on a B axis machine as you have on the non-B axis machine. So especially if you're doing parts that have to be go from one machine to another, this way you can also make it a commonality. And all these tools, again, will the same tools, there are no special tools from the list that we've already discussed. The only difference is, is the BTH or BTBH 2000-01, which is the B axis head for the Madra tool in the last position. And something Brian touched on too is the interchangeability of tool. Now, for those customers that have other models of machines, or uh, these are all compatible between the L32 series. So, co what's common to the A20, the L A320, the L220. So now again, you have the GSE 1310s, the GTS 6312s, 6313, the BSE 607, and the BSE 707. So if they have those tools on their other machines, they may not necessarily need to buy additional tooling if they've already bought additional tooling that's interchangeable for their other pieces of equipment. Again, here's another list where it's for the L220, that are very common to the L220. And all those, again, can fit on the L32. Even the M432 has some common tools. The GSE 1310s, the GDF 1601, and the GDF 16, GSE 1610, sorry. Now we can start getting into some of the, the options of the L32. And I'll try to keep it, 
what's this these this option first option here is for all three models so this is the front live tool unit or the u 121 b again it goes we talked about the 6000 rpm it has three rotary tools so when you replace the standard static tools on the l32 it's a four position now you're going to have only three positions so that's something to make note of and when you order this unit it comes with two pieces of gse 1310s and one of the sau 825s so if you the sau 825 is the static holder now that static holder allows you to use standard drilling boring sleeves and all that in place of a live motor a live tool if you want to use all three live you need an additional GSE 1310 or you'd have to take one from the gang. Now this next option is for the L32 Type 8 only. So this is the L32 151B. That's the back live tooling unit, which we showed before you had the five position static block well, now you can be replaced with the U151B. This, all, this comes with, again, the two live, only two live GSC 1310s and an SAU 825 adapter. Now, one of the tools, four rotary tools, you still retain five tools, unlike the front work unit, but one of the, these tools is fixed in the four rotary. Another thing that I've gotten a few questions on, again, the long workpiece unit. I mean, we, most people there have a good understanding of what the long workpiece unit is, but the first question that I usually get is what's that M432U4202B? Well, I figured I'd put that in here just to clarify things. That is the mount on the back of the sub spindle that allows you to use the, the work stock pipe. So when you're asked by a customer, you know, what is this? That is, it is just the mount that goes on the back of your sub spindle to allow you to use your tubing. Now, one comment at, and supplement that I like to mention is that yes the long work piece is limited by 32 millimeter diameter so even if you as we go further and we start talking about 30 millimeter 38 millimeter upgrade the through spindle is still only 32 millimeter capacity below this we have the the three standard stock pipes i know that we can get have made any ones that you need but it's a two-piece unit one's an adjustable end to it we have them for the 20 millimeter a 25 millimeter millimeter and a 32 millimeter stock these are standard pipes so but if you need anything you can always contact the new england office and have specials made if you need one for a specific project Another question comes up, you know, when they ask about the ejector unit. Well, the servo ejector unit, the U52B, you know, this goes back to some of the older L's and M's. They had the servo ejector sta standard, and now we've gone to the air cylinder, which is just forward and back. You can control the pressure, how fast it goes, but that's pretty much it. And so if you have any special needs, for ejection or you're trying to save time with not going all the way back we have a programmable ejector that will mount in place of the air cylinder ejection unit this next one i've gotten a few questions about um it's i've been on the quote for you know, a long time i'm very all our quotes what this is, are you 
550B or the 552B is a knockout jig for through hole work piece. Of course, one is for the 32 millimeter spec, one is for the 38. What this system is, it's a spring loaded system that goes up against the back of the part so that if you have a through hole work piece, you've got a drill hole all the way through, you have to machine in there, this will help prevent chips or help keep chips out of the sub spindle when you're machining your part. And if you don't have high pressure coolant, this is a very good option if, to keep you know your backward chips out of this out of the sub spindle as much as possible. So th there is a question yep. um, and it pertains to the first question and I was going to interrupt you but um, now the, the customer or the person asked the question again. Can you back up and show a 3210 GSE 3210? For you, Brian? Sure. <laughs> I knew you could. You want, you want the, the, the tight? Okay. There we are. That one. What the customer is asking is if they use the last station, do they need to put a live tool in the other two stations? Will it be live oh, if they I, only oh, use I, the last station? Okay. Now, now, now I understand. I'm sorry for that confusion. Now, typically, when we're using static tools or no tool at all, we have an idler gear that usually gets placed in the tooling position. So it comes with one idler gear, but you, if you wanted to not have any tooling in the first position or the second position and only wanted to drive the third, you would have to purchase a second idler gear. This is a gear to gear driven system. I guess, does that answer the question? But that is it, perfect, thank you. So here's another, uh, what is the change over time on the B-axis machine to go from the standard four front, four front, four back to the optional three position modular? Um, in my experience, it's uh, not bad because we're only dealing with a few bolts. It is a heavy unit, so you got to be careful when you take that on and off. And so if we look here, it's just bolted up right here, so you would unbolt it with the bolt from underneath, drop it, and then bolt up, clean, of course, clean up everything. You want to make sure everything's clean when you mount, remount the next and bolt it back up in place. So it's a, uh, it's a time, you know, it, you know, it could take you 15, 20 minutes, depending on, you know, how neat you are about it, how, you know, you know, how, and you can get it from the back door, so it makes it nice. So that's that's all the backlog. So uh, thank you. Please continue. Yeah, I have one other comment on that uh, changeover on that holder. With that other holder, I believe the citizen hobbing attachment will also go on that. Yes. Here, okay. again, the module arm did the interchangeability tooling. Talked about the front, talked about the back. You're here, you're here. Did that. So the other question I got a couple times um, was the work separator by basket on the pickoff. Now, all this is is a different spindle cap because you're not going to be using your collet system and a basket that mounts onto that that gets orientated so that now you can come up underneath the gang which also like brian said we would put this configuration on the machine and then tell the machining data what we have so the machine would know how far it can move it can change the strokes automatically so you don't have to worry about any of that and this basket will allow this is for people who can't pick up with a collet onto their part whether there's hydraulic restrictions or anything like that so this option it's I'm not going to say it's used a lot, but I have seen it in use on other pieces of equipment. And I want to just define what it was. Because again, there's, I've been asked that question in the past. A 
couple more options here. You have the U640Z and the U640B. Okay, what are these? These are replacement sleeves for the TF37 system or the 32 millimeter spec that are keyed that will allow you to use keyed hex collets or non-conforming collets, whether they're square. Here it says hex, but if you had an odd shape, a square shape, and you wanted to be able to replace the collet, clean the collet without having to rephase the machine once you've done the initial phasing, this way it's a keyed, you can have your collets keyed, and then you can just take the collets in and out and replace them for cleaning or use and you don't have to go through a whole phasing project process every time you replace it and it keeps its orientation. The next section is all about the conversion to the 32 millimeter, 38 millimeter spec from the 32. So in this process, you have the U960Z and the U960B. That's the main and sub chuck assembly for the TF43, the larger collar. It allows you to do the 38 millimeter. Those come with a sleeve, the cap, the spring, and all the required components to upgrade that system. Now, for the guide bushing, you get upgraded to the U2160Z. And the synchronized rotary guide bushing unit takes the STM38 guide bushing. It's a whole unit. It bolts right in place of the original unit. There's no loss in stroke or anything like that. Also available is the GTF 6016, which is the gang plate. Placement gang plate with the five turning, five eighths tool holder with the tool pitch of 39 millimeter. And again, I must reiterate that, yes, you can upgrade this machine to 38 millimeter, but as far as through the sub spindle, we are still limited to 32 millimeter. Any questions on those? So far, so good, Mark. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the control a little bit and some of the options on there. Standard on this machine, what we discussed earlier, was the 160 meters. You had the option to upgrade to either a 320 meter or a 600 meter, what they call tape length. We also can upgrade to a nine set of optional block skips. So what this would, you know, what this feature allows you to do is if you have multiple families or multiple sections where you need to skip. The machine comes standard with a single block skip. Now, with this option, we can expand that to up to nine sets. Now, the next feature is the back machining program skip function. It, you can skip the back work by many ways, but this is a function that's dedicated to that in the program. And it just allows you to program around doing that inside the program without doing anything special. And I'm not gonna get all into the programming into the apps of it all, but you just need to know that it helps you with the back programming skip. But you don't need it to skip the backward. There are other, there are multiple options. My favorite or option to talk about again is low frequency vibration control, LFV. Now, just to make a note on this LFV, I mean, for those that you haven't seen LFV or the low frequency vibration, I have a little bit on the next slide, but I really encourage you to go see, we do have a presentation just on the LFV concept and it's a you know take the time and watch it if you know you get the opportunity if you want to know more in depth about it but now as of 
January 2nd, mode three is included with the order of LFE. Great thing, it's LFE for threading, if you're not, not familiar. So we have three modes here. You got mode one is a, a turning mode. Mode two is primarily a drilling mode. And three is for threading. Of course, the logo, you get a logo plate with this option as well. You got, you know, again, this low frequency vibration is, an, is, of course, an option. But all our machines, as we saw in the beginning, we saw like the L32 1M8 LFERD. What that means is it's not turned on in your machine, but it is in your machine and it can be turned on as an option. But the machine itself is already built to handle the LFV software. Mark, we have a question here. Uh, yep. How would you translate the length of tape length available for a program memory, number of characters or number of programs? Usually, I mean, Brian, you can step in here and correct me if I'm wrong. I believe even dating back to the area, it was number of characters in kilobytes. And I don't have those, unfortunately, I'm sorry, I don't have those numbers in front of me right at the moment. It, with the simplest, uh, it's it's an old format that maybe we should change, but I guess some of the industry still uses it, but it is tape length, okay? So roughly um, um, uh, 8K is 20 meters. So then if you double it, you know, 40 and double it 80, you can get to what what the other ones are but uh, 8k is 20 meters and you can go from there i would say it's confusing enough to not worry about it if you if you want to know the maximum the 600 i believe is 512 okay, okay. thank you now with our lfv we have the capability of using this on the X and Z servos, it can break difficult chips, wraparound chips. It allows us to control the chip, it allows us for, helps us with deep hole drilling, and it can even be used with rotary tools. But with the rotary tools, I'd have to confirm this, but there is an option that is required for the rotary tool feed for revolution for the LFE to work on this in a rotary tool capacity. And it's, you know, it's an awesome feature. Anybody who has problems with chip wrap, anybody has problems, they cut plastics. Um, this is just such an awesome feature that I can only encourage you to look at the video if you want more information on it. And uh, you can always ask any of us, whether it's a regionals, applications guys, and we can discuss it further with you. Uh, we have two questions here, oh, three questions here. Yeah. Uh, can the control options be added after the machine is installed? Yes. It's, it's just, we have to turn, you know, again, the machines are already LFE, as long as the machines are already LFE ready, we are allowed to turn them on. Uh, another but is, is but and that says and that says control options. He might not even be asking about LFV, so any control option. Oh, any control option. Uh, Yes, usually that's, you know, always been an ability to turn that on in the field, providing that it doesn't require, because there were some things that were limited because they required a lot of uh, upgrades to the machine. But most traditional control options can be turned on in the field. Uh, is LFV available for the sub as well? on the type 10 is there additional charge for the sub no additional for the, the the sub on this and brian can correct me if i'm wrong but because the y doesn't have access we do have y axis on the sub of the l32 i mean we have since we don't have y axis on the sub spindle of the l32 we have lfb capability Yes, so so 100% correct so we we've added the ability of lfv to the sub spindle 
of the type 10, the type 12, and the type 8 of the L32. Originally, it was uh, restricted, but now it is available. So if a customer has an older L32 with LFV, he could request his distributor a software upgrade and they could utilize it. If today you purchase it, you get it on the front and the subspindle. The statement or the restriction is the subspindle has a little bit less frequency to use. So your spindle speed of use of LFV on the subspindle is a little bit reduced from the main spindle, but we do offer it as standard on the subspindle. When you Thank buy you. the option, that's a bad yes. word. Standard, yeah. when, when you buy the option, you get it on both sides. Uh, we have another question. Will LV affect the groove or X axis turning? Well, if you can use, you know, again, you can groove with it, you can turn with it. So you can use them both. I'm not sure what they mean by effect. Does it mean that if if you're running it in one on the back, can you see some issues from the vibration on the front? Possible if the vibration is excessive. Yeah, and, and I, I would add or change to that that grooving with LFV is just fantastic. If, yeah. if any of us are programmers and process engineers, there's many, many materials that'll wrap around. And when we peck ourselves, every time the tool hits again, there's a high pressure because it's got to start to cut. With LFV, it's constant with a irregular shape that you're actually knocking off the high spots that it's much less cutting pressure. So in a, in a weird way, it might even help that effect from front to back. But LFV is great with grooving. And last question here, is the price of LFV going to come down now that it's standard on the machines and the hardware is already there? I don't foresee the price coming down on that because we were paying for the system that's already in the machine, but we have to turn it on and allow you access to it. And we have to defray our costs on that. Yeah, it's it's a play on words. You know, it's already yes. there. What it is is MCC has already purchased it, so we've already spent money so that you have the ability to have it as an option. Um, otherwise, we need to stock separate machines. So we've done it this way as the best way to have inventory for customers and then who need it or don't need it, they still you know, can get the same machines. But no, the pricing is not going to change. This is the pricing we've set.